Hello folks, it's that time of the week where we get to dive into all the latest news from the world of Azeroth. And it's fair to say that the dry spell of news we've had as we wait for the mysterious pirate patch well and truly broke this week with not one, but three major news drops from the developers, along with an in-game event that's newsworthy for all of the wrong reasons. This video is going to be a doozy, so please stay around. First up is the big announcement of the release date for the mystery pirate patch. 10 to 6, which is on Tuesday the 19th of March for North America and Wednesday the 20th for Europe. The only information that Blizzard shared is that this is going to be a limited time event. They also confirmed that Season 4 won't be launching until several weeks after the patch drops. Now the fact it's not a global release has had a fairly mixed reception in the community, which prompted executive producer Holly Longsdale in a reply to a Mr. GM tweet to say that they had wanted to do a global release and implied that they decided that it wasn't possible. As I mentioned in last week's news video, I personally think that a global release won't have that much of an impact in practice given the timings of the release. Personally, I expect that I would have not have managed to have got to play it until the day after in any event. I also think that it's a lot easier to avoid spoilers for, say, six waking hours than it is to avoid them for a couple of weeks, so I'm okay with them taking the time they need to get a smooth release out there. Most selfishly, this does have the upside that the team will have some time to fix any emergent issues and bugs in the US before we get it in Europe. So again, a huge thanks to our friends over in North America for beta testing our releases. On Tuesday, we got a big update from the developers on some major changes to all dungeon difficulties that will launch in Season 4 and be carried forward into the next expansion. The developers have decided to restructure the non-Mythic Plus dungeons to address issues with the relevance of Heroic and Mythic Zero dungeons. Normal dungeons are remaining unchanged, but Heroic dungeons will be increased in difficulty to match the current Mythic Zero difficulty with the rewards being boosted to match. These dungeons will remain fully curable. Mythic Zero dungeons are being increased in difficulty to around Mythic Plus level 8 to 10, Mythic Zero still won't have a timer or any affixes and will retain the current weekly lockout. Rewards are also going to be boosted to match the Mythic Plus 9 level. Mythic Plus 2 through to 10 difficulties are being effectively removed and Mythic Plus 11 and above are being squished in levels so that a plus 11 will become a plus 2 and a plus 20 will become a plus 10. Reward drops will effectively be unchanged so that the best Mythic Plus gear will now drop from a Mythic Plus 10 and above. Mythic Plus affixes are being changed slightly with the first set of affixes kicking in at level 5 and the second set at level 10. This means that for many key levels you're going to have fewer affixes than you're used to currently. The obvious question is how will this affect me, the player? Well, don't worry, I'm going to run you through my analysis of how different types of players are going to be affected by this. First up, for players who do Mythic Plus 11s and above currently, honestly, there's really no practical difference at all. All that's going to change is the level number on your key, which is going to be lower than you're used to. If you do weekly 18 to 20s currently, you can expect to be doing weekly 8 to 10s in Season 4, and they will continue to give you the same rewards that you're used to right now. With one little difference in that the 8 to 9 keys will only have two affixes instead of the current three. So for some, it's maybe actually going to be a slight nerf in difficulty. If you currently do plus 12s, you're probably going to be do, doing plus 2s with only one affix next season, for example. Where there might be an impact is if you're used to doing sub a plus 11 keys at the start of a season. You're now likely going to be looking at starting off in Mythic Zero. Now, with no affixes or timer, Mythic Zero will likely be a relatively straightforward starting point for you. With loot potentially dropping from every boss, you're likely actually to get a little bit of faster gear progress to help you bridge the gap into the new plus two level. One little nuance of this is also that plus two keys don't deplete. So if you play down at that level, you're now going to have a hard floor on your key, which I think is actually quite a nice side effect. Another side benefit for higher level players is that if you don't have a key or a very low key at the start of a season, you're going to have fewer dungeons to go through to push that key up to the level you want. If you play at the plus 6 to plus 10 range currently, you will likely find yourself doing Mythic Zeros. 
while that might feel a bit daunting if you're at the lower end of the range, honestly, with no time and affixes and that higher drop rate, I doubt in practice you're going to have many issues. The biggest impact potentially is going to be to players who do sub plus sixes a lot. Those players are going to face a choice in either pushing themselves up to the new Mythic Zero level or dropping down to Heroic Dungeon. Now, I don't know who plays in this range. I suspect Blizzard have data that amounts to not very many. So it's possible in practice this won't be an issue. But if you are affected by this, do let me know in the comments below. For many Heroic only players, I suspect that the main appeal of Heroic is that it's queued. And probably many are going to do just fine in the higher difficulty, albeit some will perhaps need to spend a bit more time gearing up in normal first. But with the open world dropping similar or better gear to Heroic, there's certainly plenty of options out there to help you bridge the gap. However, I do think that for players who are used to the current system, some of these increased gaps might feel a bit daunting. And there's no doubt that there is going to be a steeper learning curve for new or returning players. That said, there are a few unknowns. Blizzard have said in their update that the Mythic Plus rating will be equivalent to the current. Now, it's really not clear to me if that means they're going to scale up the score to take account of the reduced dungeon levels, or if they're going to perhaps reduce the requirement for Keystone Master and Keystone Hero down to match the new lower scores. It's also worth saying they didn't specifically mention those achievements, I'm personally assuming there won't be any major changes, but I can't rule out the possibility that we might see them move the goalposts a little bit with those. There's also no information on the portals. Again, I think it's reasonable to assume that they're going to be for timing a plus 10, but that, I think, is definitely not guaranteed. They also didn't mention if the dungeon event quest will be changed to require Heroic instead of Mythic Zero. I suspect that if they do go ahead and reduce it to Heroic, that could make it quite attractive to players who find joining premium pugs daunting, so it's actually something I hope they do. And likewise, I'm definitely wondering if the glory achievements are going to be nerfed so that you can do them in Heroic, or if they are going to be kept at Mythic Zero. If they do keep them at Mythic Zero, my, my advice is if that's an achievement you're interested in, you might want to go ahead and try and get that done before the end of the current season. The thing I'm personally most curious about is how they're going to handle season launches. Currently Mythic Zero is available for the first two weeks of a new expansion before the raid in Mythic Plus opens, and also the first week of new patches, and I'm wondering if they may decide to move it so that it's also gated by the season launch like Mythic Plus. Personally, I have some very mixed feelings in this. At the start of an expansion, I do feel like if Mythic Plus was available, a lot of even mainstream players, let alone the hardcore ones, could feel the need to have to spam both Heroic and Mythic Zero in the first week. So, for example, maybe doing 8 Heroic and 8 Mythic Zero, which honestly doesn't appeal to me for that first week. On the other hand, for a patch release, being able to do a Mythic Zero World Tour, the first week of a patch could be a very nice way to get ready to dive right in when the season opens. Perhaps for the new expansion, Mythic Zero could open for the second week. Overall, the changes do seem very sensible to me. In the last two expansions, I personally went straight from normal dungeons to Mythic Zero dungeons at the start of the expansion. And after Mythic Plus opens, I've only ever done Mythic Zero for the Mega Dungeon or when I've been helping friends out. And looking at the gear drops compared to other sources in the open world, those lower level dungeons, honestly, there just never seemed to be much reason to want to do them. Now, I think you think these changes are going to make those difficulties feel a lot more relevant for a lot more players than they have been of late. The one missed opportunity in my view is that Blizzard don't seem to be making any changes to affixes other than reducing their appearance in lower keys. As I covered in my recent video on what I'd like to see in Season 4, I feel that the affixes do more to detract from the Mythic Plus experience than they add to it, and I'd have liked to have seen Blizzard do more to re either revamp them or be willing to experiment with removing affixes for a season. On Monday, we saw the launch of the Hearthstone 10th Anniversary event. I found this event to be fine for what it was, a limited time crossover event, but its day one launch was affected by multiple issues. 
rewards for buggy. The crossover amount for logging into Hearthstone wasn't available unless you logged in after 6pm UK time, which was many hours after the event start in Europe, and the event boss had a bunch of issues. I personally experienced portal countdowns resetting or spawning, unplayable lag, and a bizarre and apparently buggy spawn cycle in Stormwind. While bugs in video games aren't unusual, and indeed MMO players are pretty used to having issues related to too many players in a single area on day one, for me, the level of bugs in this case did serve to spoil the event for me. Event launch bugs do have a bigger impact with a limited time event, with the option to just leave it till later when it's fixed triggers feelings of FOMO. Had that not been the case, I feel that the event would likely have served to be quite a nice bit of new content to help fill the gap and the current feeling of dead time as we wait for 10 to 6. In fact, I suspect that folks who started the event from Wednesday when most of the issues were resolved will likely have enjoyed it. But the truth is, first impressions do matter and it's hard for me to believe that the developers will be happy with how it's played out. Hopefully this is something that the team can learn from, especially with 10.2.6 heading for a similarly blind release next week. Blizzard have decided to extend this event for another 5 days until Friday the 22nd of March, which should help folk catch up with anything they've missed. If you did get to the event after the issues have been fixed, I would be super interested to hear your thoughts about it in the comments down below. Blizzard have released an update for another 12 hero talents. This takes us up to 28 hero talent sets out of a total of 38, so we're getting ever closer to seeing the full setup. There's too many for me to read out in the monotone here, so the full list is up on the screen. But it does include the first previews for Monk and Demon Hunter, which I think were the only two classes remaining that we haven't seen anything for up until now. I'll put a link to the preview in the description so that you can dive into them. Blizzard have been releasing these sets before the alpha to get feedback as early as possible to give them time to act on that feedback. So if you do have any thoughts about those previews, I'd encourage you to head over to the forums and to share them with Blizzard as soon as you can. With patch 10.2.6 landing next week, it's very likely we're going to very soon have an active PTR, with Season 4 going into testing, and this means the return of PTR Watch to my weekly news videos. This is where I'll be covering all the interesting discoveries from the PTRs, alphas and betas. Now don't worry, I will always clearly signpost spoilers and I plan to put PTR watch at the end of my video so that you can drop out if you don't want to be spoiled. Now for this week, the one piece of info, and this the good news is this is spoiler safe, is that the very first build of patch 1027 has been seen on Blizzard servers. This likely won't be on the PTR until Season 4 drops, but with signs of patch 11.0 builds out there as well, it does seem that, that the team are powering ahead in all fronts in their journey to the War Within release. Well that's all for this week. Are you excited by the changes to the dungeons, or is it something that worries you? Do let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this update, do let me and YouTube know by hitting the like icon. There's going to be plenty more news, info and opinions from me coming soon, especially with the pace of news and new content from Blizzard starting to pick up. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is to hit the subscribe button below and if you want to be notified whenever a new video goes live, also make sure to hit that bell icon. Thanks for listening and I will see you all again soon.